pregnant. Obviously, the two cops were sending these messages to their friends as a bragging right or some attempt to big note themselves. Later, at 9.05am, Jaffa received a message from one of his friends asking if the murder scene was quote-unquote bad, to which he replied, not really, I've seen worse. On the 19th of June 2020, the IOPC received an anonymous tip-off about the conduct of Jaffa and Lewis. Three days later, on the 22nd of June, they were interviewed and arrested. Both of their phones were seized. Analysis of the phones showed that Jaffa had taken four photos of Nicole and Bieber, and Lewis had taken two. He also created the selfie-style photo, however. During his interview, Lewis categorically denied leaving his post and passing the inner cordon of the crime scene at any point whilst on duty. He denied doing anything at all to compromise the crime scene or the investigation. He said to investigators that he was 95% sure that he hadn't taken any photos himself. He later said in a prepared statement that when he entered the deposition, he had no knowledge or memory of taking photos. (laughs) The reality was... He took images at 4.36am, a a blurred image but the bodies of Nicole and Bieber were discernible, and another at 5.10am showing Nicole and Bieber lying intertwined with Bieber's back to the camera, a screenshot of his own photo, and an image created at 4.41am where his face was superimposed in the selfie style with the girls visible. The scene where Nicole and Bieber were left lying was not visible from the path adjacent to the large bush where they were found, and it wasn't possible to take the photos from the positions that the officers had been instructed to hold. It was only possible to get these photos by entering the bush itself and therefore risking contamination of the crime scene. His Honour Judge Mark Lucraft at their hearing in Central Criminal Court said that he had looked at those photos that the pair had taken, and he said they were definitely within 10 or 12 feet or so of the bodies. Jaffer said, though, he had not gone any closer than about 20 feet from them. Jaffer also said that he took the photos to show his friends the dangers that were around. Jaffer took two images with his phone, and he sent them both to Lewis. The photos were taken at 4.39am and 5.21am. During his interview, he said that he took the photos to protect himself against any suggestion later that he had interfered with the scene. He was concerned at the prospect of animals coming into the area. Both Lewis and Jaffa were charged with misconduct in public office. They were suspended from duty and were released on bail. Later in court, both of them issued an apology via their lawyers and indicated that they would both plead guilty. In court, both of them wore masks and they spoke only to identify themselves. It's also worth noting noting, the defence team for Daniel Hussein could have easily argued that the crime scene had been contaminated by these two idiots and that would have assisted him with getting away with murder. A separate IOPC investigation also started to look into how the Metropolitan Police handled the calls from friends and relatives of Nicole and Bieber after their bodies were discovered. The two former officers were sentenced to two years and nine months each and will serve around half before being allowed out on licence. They will never wear a police uniform again. The Metropolitan Police took a long time to release a statement in response to the two officers and their conduct. They finally issued a statement regarding the conduct, and in it, Commander Paul Brogdon stated, I am horrified and disgusted by the nature of these allegations, a sentiment which will be shared by colleagues throughout the organisation. If true, these actions are morally reprehensible, and anyone involved will be robustly dealt with. This deeply disturbing information will no doubt have created additional trauma for a family who are already grieving the devastating loss of two loved ones. I can only start to imagine the impact of this, and I'd like to sincerely apologise to them for this further burden. I know that the wider community will share our shock and repulsion at these allegations, and whilst our focus remains on Bieber and Nicole's family, we are also listening to the concerns our communities and key stakeholders will want to raise about these allegations.
On August 3rd, 2021, which would have been Nicole's 29th birthday, a vigil was held for the girls in the park. It was organized by Reclaim These Streets. The event was attended by family and friends of the sisters, including Mina Smallman, their mother, and numerous MPs and officials, including the Lord Mayor of London, Sadiq Khan. Mina wanted the vigil to be a celebration of Nicole and Bieber's lives. MP Dawn Butler said through tears, When I read about the murders, I didn't understand why there wasn't as much outcry as there should have been. She continued, Two sisters brutally murdered in this park. They had a right to be here. They had a right to dance and to go home safely. It could have been me. I've danced in this park with my friends. In interviews later, Mina Smallman agreed to meet with the Met officers. She said that she was repulsed by them, but if I'm honest, she said, I can't wait to meet Jaffa. He said he'd like to meet with the family, and I don't believe he thought that that could happen, but it will because he said he wants it to happen, and I'm going to give him that invitation. So this concludes our episode of Veritas True Crime Podcast. I hope that you've enjoyed being a little more immersed than you normally would be. Once again, please stop by and like the Facebook page or visit us on Twitter and Patreon. I'd love to hear from you. As Mina Smallman says, we need more love in the world. Remember everyone, the truth is mighty and will prevail. Until next time, my friends. <laughs>